Welcome back to Book Break! It's the end of the month, which means it's time for our monthly book haul. I always get messages from you guys saying you look forward to these, and to be honest, I really look forward to these as well. I have just received my most exciting email of the month, our virtual box of some of the best books we have published in the month of August. I don't know what's going to be inside it, but Elle said it's a particularly big haul this month. We've got 30 books in this virtual box to open. So without further ado, let's go in and open the first book. I have never seen this before. So this is Arlo, The Lion Who Couldn't Sleep. This looks absolutely adorable. So this is a children's book with a mindfulness message. That is so sweet. Ideal for bedtime and especially helpful for little ones who have trouble going to sleep. I mean, does it work for big ones who have trouble going to sleep? Because that sounds great. Let's see what we've got next. Our Dark Secret by Jenny Quintana. Okay, I've read this one. Our Dark Secret is about two girls who were friends back in the 70s when they were teenagers. One of them, our main character Elizabeth, was a bit of a loner and then she meets this new girl called Rachel, becomes kind of obsessed with her and they have this strange, quite intense friendship. And then a body is found. Okay, next is The Catholic School by Eduardo Albanati. This, you can't see from just the picture on screen, but this is a huge book. I think it's over 1200 pages. I included this one in our video we made about long books to keep you busy for a while because it definitely will. It's massive. The novel is based on a true crime that happened in Italy and it's all about exposing the dark underside of the wealthy Italian middle class. Okay, next up, The Doors of Eden by Adrian Tchaikovsky. People have been so excited for this. Adrian Tchaikovsky is like a sci-fi legend. So if you're a big sci-fi fan, I'm sure you definitely will have heard of him. If you haven't, he's someone you should really know about. And The Doors of Eden is his brand new August release. It's just this absolutely epic sci-fi story with such huge scope. It spans like multiple worlds, multiple timelines. You're gonna love it. Queer Intentions. This is a book that I loved when I read it when the hardback came out. So this is a non-fiction book by Amelia Abraham. It's her personal journey through LGBTQ plus culture. So it's this really fun mix of getting to hear some of Amelia Abraham's own life, but also she's a journalist. So she takes us on this journey, meeting so many different people from different countries, different walks of life, and learning what the queer experience is like for different people around the world. Okay, then we have a Danielle Steele child's play. So Danielle Steele is the best-selling author alive. She's also written like some of the most books ever. So I can't remember specifically what this one's about. Let's have a look. Okay, so this one is all about family and what you can learn from your children when they grow up. So our main character is a woman called Kate who has raised three children who are all adults now and they are all, their lives are turning out slightly differently than the lives she had planned for them. And so it turns out she has a lot to learn from them as well. Okay, next we have this gorgeous book, One Day in Wonderland. This is absolutely stunning. So this is a celebration of Lewis Carroll, of Alice in Wonderland. It's this gorgeous illustrated book that tells the story of Lewis Carroll's life and him first writing Alice in Wonderland. It's got like a glossary of some of the words and phrases that Lewis Carroll invented because he was so brilliant and playful with his use of language. And I mean, just look at it. That is a book you want to have on your bookshelf. Then we have Return to Wonderland. Okay, which one is this? So this is, a oh, really cool. This is a collection of original stories from some of today's biggest children's authors writing stories set in Wonderland. Oh, The Glass Hotel. I absolutely loved this one. So we have, obviously, a glass hotel, this really striking hotel made of glass on Vancouver Island. And one night at this hotel, this very beautiful bartender there called Vincent meets a rich businessman who is staying at the hotel and starts a life with him, this very rich, glamorous life. We also know that years later, Vincent is going to go missing from the deck of a ship, and so we're jumping back and forth to find out what leads to that happening as well. It's such a mesmerizing novel that honestly, I can't do justice to, and you should just read it. 
Next, we have Wayward Sun by Rainbow Rowell. So this is the sequel to Carry On. This is a YA fantasy adventure love story about vampires and wizards with a guy who's wearing a very Harry Styles-esque suit here. And in general, this cover just makes me want to go on an American road trip, like right now. There is a third book in the series coming called Anyway, The Wind Blows. So you're going to want to catch up with this series first. Okay, what is this? The Morning Flower by Amanda Hocking. Okay, this is a book in the Trill universe. So Amanda Hocking originally self-published these books set in the Trill universe, and they were so popular, like massively best-selling, so they ended up being re-released through traditional publishing. And that was in the early 2010s, so it was this whole trilogy about a teenager called Wendy who stumbles across this alternate universe. And now Amanda Hocking has gone back and revisited that world, but with a whole new story, new characters, new trilogy of books. Okay, Sorcery of a Queen by Brian Nasland. Okay, so this must be the sequel to his first book, which was called Blood of an Exile. <laughs> Forgot the name for a minute there. So the premise for the first book in this series, our main character was exiled and his punishment was that he was doomed to become a dragon slayer. Only our main character turned out to be the best dragon slayer in the history of the world and is still alive. So in this second book, he is still in exile, still notorious, still living on borrowed time, and then he meets a banished queen. Then we have Lovecraft Country, released with a brand new TV tie-in cover. I am so excited for the TV series produced by Jordan Peele and J.J. Abrams. It's a sci-fi horror story with a twist. It's subverting a lot of the tropes that often come with that genre, particularly some especially racist tropes, and it is set in New England in the 1950s, so racism is one of the horrors that the characters encounter. You can see why that's a project that Jordan Peele was perfect for. I can't wait to watch this show. Then we have Shaggy Bane by Douglas Stewart. This has just been longlisted for the Booker Prize. Shaggy Bane is about this boy called Shaggy growing up in Glasgow with an alcoholic mother. And it's this really emotional, moving story of about 10 years of his life. We actually predicted in a book break video right at the beginning of summer that this was gonna be one of the books everyone was talking about this year. And that was even before the Booker Prize long list. So you're definitely gonna wanna read this one if you wanna join in with all the bookish conversations this year. Then we have, oh, I have been excited about this book. This is I Survived, a true story by Victoria Sillias, who is this woman whose husband tried to kill her by sabotaging her parachute. So this absolutely terrifying true story and she has now written a book about it. I remember reading about this story in the newspaper at the time and being so shocked. And this wasn't even the first time her husband had tried to kill her. So this story is definitely going to be terrifying and fascinating. Oh, this is XX by Rian Hughes. So this is a sci-fi story that questions what might happen in the wake of the biggest scientific discovery in human history. But it's also a kind of exploration of graphic design. So it says here that it incorporates NASA transcripts, newspaper and magazine articles, fictitious Wikipedia pages, undeciphered alphabets. I just keep hearing so many different descriptions of this book and I'm so intrigued. I really have to read it. Next, we have A Company of Swans by Ava Ibbotson. This one is a classic and this new cover is gorgeous, so definitely one you're gonna to want to collect. So this one is a historical romance about a 19 year old girl called Harriet who joins a ballet group and runs away with them. So it's partly about the freedom and beauty of dance and also about her falling in love. Now we're into some children's books, The Singing Mermaid. So this is a Julia Donaldson and Lydia Monks collaboration, a make and do book. So loads of fun arts and crafts and stuff in there. With over 200 stickers, it says, I wish I had the physical book here. My Magical Flying Pony. Again, I really wish I had the physical book. These always have so many fun interactive elements that you can push and pull and slide around. So they're always really cute. 
We also have my favourite unicorn. This looks equally adorable. It says turn the wheel to choose. I just want to play with that so badly. Then, aha, the Gospel of the Eels. This one's been really talked about. So this is a non-fiction book about a father and son relationship but also about eels. So this all kind of comes together in the book because the writer, Patrick Svensson, had quite a difficult relationship with his father. His father's only passion was eels. So this is like a science memoir of Patrick Svensson learning what is so fascinating about eels. And it turns out we know almost nothing about them and they really are very interesting. Then we have Summer Water by Sarah Moss. So I was lucky enough to get to read this one a bit early. Sarah Moss is such a brilliant writer. And this is a book set all in one day in a Scottish caravan park in the rain. So it's really tense, really claustrophobic, and there is a lot of foreboding going on. So we spend a little bit of time in the minds of each of the different characters at this holiday park. And we know the whole way through we are building up to some disaster at the end of the day. Then we have Karamo Brown's book, I Am Perfectly Designed. So this was written by Karamo Brown from Queer Eye. He wrote it together with his kid and it's this really sweet story of this parent-child relationship and learning to love each other and loving yourself for exactly who you are. Then we have, ooh, a really bright fun cover, Flipped. I don't know what this one's about. Okay, so this looks like a really fun YA story and it's actually been adapted for Netflix. So it's about these two teenagers, Julie and Bryce, and Julie has seriously fancied Bryce for ages and he just wants her to leave him alone until suddenly in eighth grade, everything flips. So that sounds really fun. Then we have The Lamplighter by Jackie Kay. I really want to read this. So this was originally produced as a play, but when you read it on the page, it apparently reads like a poem. So it's the story of four women and one man telling the story of their lives in slavery. Jackie Kay is such a beautiful writer, so I really want to read this one. Then we have, this is a collection of short stories, You Will Never Be Forgotten by Mary South. So this is a collection of very strange, unusual, quirky stories that are all based in some way on technology and people using technology to try and fill some gap in their lives. Then we have Boy Queen by George Lester, so exciting. So George Lester is another booktuber, so we love him. This is his debut novel. It's a YA story about a boy going to university and discovering drag. And George Lester has been making such cool videos of him doing full drag makeup, talking about the book. It just looks so much fun, especially for big fans of RuPaul's Drag Race. Then we have this beautiful book, A Poem for Every Autumn Day. Perfect time to get your hands on this one. So this is another collection edited by Ali Asiri. Hello, note from editing Emma here from the future. I just wanted to clarify something about this book. So Ali Asiri has edited these beautiful poetry collections that we have, a poem for every day of the year and a poem for every night of the year. And now she's releasing these little mini seasonal collections, which are so beautiful. So this is just the autumn dates taken from that full collection and it's just absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to have all seasons on my bookshelf. This is Intentional Integrity, How Smart Companies Can Lead an Ethical Revolution. Sounds great. Let me look at the description. Okay, so the author, Robert Chestnut, is this Silicon Valley expert and the book is a six-step process for leaders of companies to foster and manage a culture of integrity at work, which he says is actually important to the company's success. And finally, I can see there is one more in here, and that is How to Survive a Pandemic. Very appropriate right now. Michael Greger is the author of books like How Not to Die, so he is an expert on how our diets can keep us healthy and alive. And now in this book, Dr. Greger is delving into the origins of some of the world's deadliest pathogens and tracing their evolution. And so he's got advice for what we can do to protect ourselves and our loved ones during this current crisis, but also what human society needs to do as a whole to prevent even worse catastrophes in the future. So this book is gonna save us all. Let's end that on a very positive note. So that was our Whopper August book haul. I am out of breath from talking about all those books. Do leave a comment below letting me know which of those you're most excited to get your hands on. And I will link to our playlist here of all of our previous book hauls. See you next time.